Organic structures typically contain several, maybe many, carbon atoms, a lot of hydrogens, and a few other atoms. One of the ways we can draw those structures to show how all the atoms are bonded to each other is using the Lewis structure convention. Let me give you an example. I'm going to put a few carbons in a row and add some special things here and there. And then you recall that carbon needs to have a filled outer shell. So at this point, we're only showing two of its electrons, a pair that it shared with another carbon in this example, for instance. So this atom will have three hydrogens attached. This carbon will have two hydrogens attached. This carbon will have one. This carbon will have one. And this carbon will have two. Now you can see when you look carefully that each of the carbons has a filled outer shell. Each of the other atoms has a filled outer shell, which means for hydrogen, two electrons in its outer shell, and for oxygen and nitrogen and bromine, like carbon, it'll be an octet that fills the outer shell. We could draw those electrons if we want to emphasize that there are some unshared pairs. We won't do that unless there's some specific reason to, but let me do it now, just so you get the idea of showing electron pairs. This oxygen has two unshared pairs. And then you can see together with the two shared pairs that would make a filled outer shell. This bromine has three unshared pairs. The nitrogen has one. And here's another oxygen. And look, it has two unshared pairs. You'll see a pattern here. Nitrogen typically will have one unshared pair in a stable neutral molecule. Oxygen will have two and a halogen will have three. Carbon, of course, has no unshared pairs in a stable neutral molecule. So this is a Lewis structure. It adequately shows which atoms are bonded to which. We've already talked about the fact that this Lewis structure doesn't show anything about three dimensions. But in addition, it's easy to notice that it's going to take quite a bit of drawing to draw out a structure that has several carbon atoms, several hydrogens, and some other atoms as well. And that takes a lot of time. It also turns out that the more we show of these hydrogens and carbons, the less other things stand out and it's the other things that are important. So there are other ways to draw these structures that work better. One of them is called a condensed formula. And this is a more compact way of drawing structures that writes the carbons and hydrogens all together if it's unambiguous which hydrogens and carbons are attached to which. And you see it skips drawing a lot of the bonds, and it skips drawing out individual hydrogens when it's not necessary. And this is a preferable way to write the structure because it's faster and easier, and because the special parts of the molecules tend to stand out more. The eye is caught more by the fact that there's a carbon-oxygen double bond and a bromine and an NH2 and OH in here. But there's a much better way that uses a convention that doesn't even draw the carbons and hydrogens at all. Let's take a look. These are called bond line structures because the bonds are represented by lines and those lines also represent carbons and hydrogens. And in this convention, we are just going to draw lines, except where there's something special about the molecule. This convention says that there is a carbon at the end of each line and at each break so I'm going to put dots in there to make it clear what we're talking about. And so in these other formulas, you could see you could count six carbons, and here you could count one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. It's drawn much faster, much easier. The carbons are assumed to have enough hydrogens, so they have a filled outer shell. And that's something you assume after all the other special atoms are drawn in, the, the halogens and the oxygens and nitrogens which we call heteroatoms because they're different. And the advantages of the bond line structure are very fast, easily drawn, and two, the special parts of the molecule really stand out. So your eye is drawn immediately to the fact that there is a carbon-oxygen double bond in the molecule, that there is a halogen attached with a single bond, that there is an NH2. These are the things that are special about that molecule. And you can probably already guess the things that are special about molecules are the things that dictate the chemistry of that molecule. So when our eye looks at an organic structure, we want to see the things that are special. 
And then we may pay a little bit of attention to the other parts of the carbon framework, but mostly we want to see what's special. And those special arrangements of atoms are called functional groups. And functional groups are just what the name implies. That's where the function of chemistry is. That's where the action is. And I can tell you ahead of time that that action occurs because of two things. One is the difference in electronegativity between carbon and something bonded to it, which as we've seen causes polar covalent bonds, so partial charges. And chemistry is, the chemistry we're going to talk about is mostly charge driven. And the second thing is chemistry is driven by the uh, presence of lone pairs, unshared pairs. And as we noticed up above, it's really easy to take a look at these structures and see, oh, there are some lone pairs, and that will dictate chemistry as well as the polar covalent bonds. So the existence of functional groups in a molecule is extremely easy to see using the bond line structures. The bond line structures are real easy to draw and drawn quickly. And most of the time, we will represent structures using the bond line convention. At the same time, in the beginning, uh, if it helps you draw out the full Lewis structure of molecules so you can get a feeling for where the hydrogen and carbons are, where the sing single bonds are, and use a condensed formula if it works for you. But for the most part, you need to gain great facility in using the bond line structure convention because it's so much easier and preferable, and we'll use that most of the time.